Shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, Sandy from Big Max Workshop and Painting Studio and today I'm painting an Adeptus Sororitas Canon S um, with uh, information coming on that the Sister of Battle are getting a new mini decks and the chapter approved I felt the urge to get one out and paint it so as uh, always I've painted it black and uh, this is a uh, as a base and this is a long one so uh, brace for impact on this because it's going to take a while this first layer is um, German Red Brown by Vallejo, it's a prime uh, usually but it does work as a really good um, base layer as well. I decided to use that one, I think it's a real rich um, texture to it. Uh, the next layer is Corn Red by Games Workshop and uh, I'm using that as an initial highlight uh, going pretty much three quarters of the way around all the uh, areas and uh, what, what I've painted with the uh, red brown. Uh, it's just to get a, a much more fresh red feel to uh, the, uh, the paintwork. Uh, next is uh, once I've added a second uh, layer of um, corn red just to really brighten that re uh, red up because uh, obviously the um, German red brown is quite a, a dull red. Uh, it's got a lot of brown in, in, in it, so I wanted to um, make it a bit brighter, a bit richer, and uh, make it look uh, a little bit more interesting to start off with. So I uh, then go over the entire thing with uh, a non oil. Uh, this has been thinned down, obviously, and it's just to uh, add some depth to the uh, model. Um, really uh, brings out the um, detail. Because uh, with this being one of the old uh, metal figs, it has got a lot of detail what's hidden away in uh, obscure places. So you've got to be careful to uh, not overload it. Make sure you can get all that detail out available to you. So once uh, uh, I make a, a next layer is Wazdaka Red. Now uh, this one obviously is the uh, natural highlight for Corn Red, um, with it being a game virtual paint. Now, uh, I'm, again, I'm going for about the halfway uh, areas now on the uh, models and um, upper, re uh, upper regions. Uh, it allows, um, uh, using this color, it really is a subtle change. So it allows you to uh, really um, blend the model uh, highlights in nicely. So next is uh, Wazdaka with a bit of Scale 75's Moonray Flesh. Now this was a bit of an error in choice of the highlighting colour, but it did work out for me in the end. Um, and it became a little bit pinky, uh, more than I wanted, um, but I'm still highlighting in the same uh, pattern. And now I'm uh, literally highlighting the, probably about two thirds of the area what was covered in the wild stack now. Um, focusing all on the upper sections uh, of the uh, model. Uh, really um, taking my time on getting that uh, paint just right. So next is um, a, a layer of uh, red tone. Could be you, you could equally use Calvert Crimson. Red tone's an army paint wash. I do like to use them occasionally. And uh, that's just to uh, bring that red back down. I wanted it to be a red, not a pink. Um, so I really uh, went to town with the red tone just to get it uh, in and about that, um, that detail. And it really does a, a good job of um, bringing the colours back together. Now if you notice, this is the second wash now I've already put on and I still haven't finished. I'm, uh, so I'm really taking the, um, taking the time on this armour to get it looking really, really interesting and really vibrant. Now this is a, like I say, this is a red tone, um, and it's just to bring that um, that redness back to the armor away from the pinky color. So next is Vallejo's flat red. Again, this is a almost a feathering sort of a technique uh, for the uh, upper, real upper areas of the uh, of the highlights. I'm just uh, this is almost an edge highlight at this point and um, bringing them uh, points out making extra work on any 
large obvious edges such as the edges of the gloves and the fingers making it um, really 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 pop and once I finish with that it's Vallejo's Vermilion uh, which is again kept inside the areas done with the flat red uh, making sure I'm not making them uh, highlight highlight sections too uh, too wide. Don't want it to look weird. So I'm just uh, throwing another uh, black wash onto the uh, model just to add the depth into it again. This is again null oil. It's been thinned down a hell of a lot. Um, just to make sure uh, it doesn't clog up any of the detail. It's just, uh, like I say, it's just to um, bring more definition to the um, to the depth of the models, where, uh, so I can see um, the recesses much better. So, once I've uh, uh, letting them dry, the uh, line of the pelt. Uh, painted in heavy brown, uh, heavy brown. I wanted to look, I wanted to look like um, some kind of lion sort of pelt rather than a classic wolf sort of colour. Uh, so I went with uh, Vallejo's heavy brown, um, which is a very uh, sandy colour. Uh, a couple of layers of that, and get you get a real nice um, uh, look on the uh, model. That's where we're at so far. Um, just uh, been working on the uh, on the armor up till now. So next on the um, pelt is heavy khaki, and again another Vallejo color. Um, it's a similar sort of uh, color to Shabti Bone uh, or Carrick Stone, uh, maybe. Uh, really nice colors, really, and gives you a nice sort of uh, fur um, color. Quite yellowy on the palette, but um, it works well for this as, as it's going over a more uh, brown colour. And the next layer is Agrax Earthshade. Now this is thinned down, and I'm going to do two layers of Agrax as uh, I want to get um, plenty of depth, but I thinned it down so I don't uh, fill the details out too much. Um, I wanted to uh, really control the uh, the wash and the depth of the paintwork. Now it's important to uh, remember to thin down uh, washes, as uh, if you put them on neat too often, it can fill up the detail really quickly. So just be aware of that. Uh, the next is heavy khaki again. I'm doing a sort of an overbrush technique on the um, fur. Now this is dead easy because the uh, details are um, very well stand uh, stand out. But uh, on the areas where you can't get to with the overbrush, just uh, be, take a little bit of care. Uh, make sure that um, you um, pick them out, pick the uh, individual sections out well, so you'll get a real nice even uh, coat across the um, the fur lining. Now I've added a bit of screaming skull to it. Again, I'm doing the same technique, a bit of an overbrush, um, picking out uh, certain certain areas where you can't get in with the over, uh, with the flat of the brush. And I'm just being extra, extra careful not to fill out the detail um, anywhere. So anywhere where you do fill out the detail, just go back in with a little bit of water on your um, paintbrush, so you can pick it out and clean out that um, that, sm that smudge. So I've added some more screaming skull now, just for the uh, extremities, and um, just to uh, make it look um, that a little bit brighter. Now I'm going for a more of a lioness sort of. Um, fur on this rather than uh, the male lion. I wanted something a little bit lighter um, than um, the uh, male lion mane. Um, make it look a little bit more uh, more interesting just to stand it out against the uh, rest of the fig. And I'm going with a Agrax Earthshade wash again uh, just to put the uh, detail back in, uh, bring that depth in and also blends the colours together nicely. Um, so any areas where the highlights are a little bit messed up, uh, just tidies them up a little bit as well. So um, it just hides any um, bad areas. Now this is a bit completely messed up um, initially. This is the uh, robes. Now I start off going for the uh, 
uh, Space Wolf Strike or so. So this is a Fang um, as a uh, as a baseline. And uh, quite honestly, I would do this differently next time. Um, I wanted to keep the same colours um, as my other sister of battle, but in a, a more reverse sort of manner. Um, make, make, make the officer uh, stand out. Uh, the next layer is Rust Grey. Um, and I apply these to the highlight areas, obviously. Uh, but it starts to stand out far, far too much for me. Um, so uh, I really did have to uh, look into going back and fixing it up. Now, thinking on, I should have... We should really glaze this as this is a, a very intricate uh, area. But obviously, mistakes were made. Uh, I went for a Drakenoff um, Nightshade, uh, which had been thinned down, and I did a couple of layers of that uh, to add the recess um, detail in and try to blend the um, paint together. Now, I do apologise for my finger being in the way, but obviously, I am right handed. So uh, I can't always avoid this. So once I'd uh, done uh, done that, uh, rust grey again uh, to be uh, highlight. Uh, try and pull some of that detail away, make it uh, look a bit more interesting again. At this point, I realised I was starting to realise it was just not going to look right. Although I did try to finish it off um, with the full tricolour. The cloak was based in Wolf Grey, uh, which is a Vallejo paint, uh, and a couple of good layers on that. It's really a uh, nice colour. It's a very browny, earthy sort of grey, so it really does contrast well against the, um, the more uh, blue uh, greys on the uh, robes. Now, there's a lot of uh, sneaky areas in here what um, are actually uh, not... Um, uh, sections what you think which is typical of the older um, metal models some areas what look like robe are actually um, cloak and vice versa so it's just to be just um, pay a little bit more attention to what the area is what you're painting because these are, uh, old metal models are very deceptive figs at times so you just got to be a little bit um, aware of uh, what what everything is as um, the Definition uh, technology hadn't been invented at this point. We did have some really nice sculpts, but um, some some of the uh, detail work was actually blurred together. So a couple of layers of wolf grey on the uh, cloak, and back to the robes again. So now I'm starting to layer it up with uh, Fenrisian grey um, as a sort of a, a glaze. To uh, bring them highlights up. Now at this point, I'm starting to uh, notice that it's still too blue. Uh, it's still too blue. I want the um, I want the robes to be a a bluey grey, but it just weren't looking right. I then finished off as a edge highlight with a pale grey blue, which is a Vallejo colour, and really does um, work well with the Space Wolf tricolour. Uh, so it's sort of a natural step up. Um, for them. Now I am being very very careful, the paint is incredibly thin at this point uh, and it's just to uh, put, uh, pick out the detail work, make it look that bit more interesting, make it look that bit more uh, vibrant uh, along the um, edges of the model. Now what I am finding here is that the um, paint does actually dry a lot uh, faster than I was intent I was hoping. Once I'd um, got the robes looking something like, I then went back over with very very thin, um, very very thin rust grey. But obviously, I'm still finishing these highlights first. So I'm, I'm taking it up to a, an area where I can take it back again, uh, just to make it uh, fit uh, the core scheme I had intended. So I'm still using this uh, pale um, grey blue, uh, picking out them details again. Of course, I've got a plan at this point. I know what to do with myself. So at this point, I've added a little bit of off-white into pale grey blue just for the final, final highlights. 
um, and it just uh, brings them uh, areas out to a nice, nice point. The trim uh, was painted in hammered copper uh, for the base, and uh, I there is a lot of trim here. Uh, there's fleur de lises on each of the limbs. Uh, there is obviously Aquila's Imperial signal, um, symbology all over the place. She has got stacks of detail on her. Um, so I'm working all the uh, trim areas with hammered copper. Areas um, all painted up in the hammered copper had gone, had gone over with uh, Balthazar Gold. Um, and that's a really, really nice highlight for hammered copper actually. A very uh, ready gold colour, so it really works well together. Once the uh, Balthazar Gold had gone down, I start to pick out the upper areas, including the uh, trim around her uh, boobs and uh, uh, around her waist uh, with Psychorax Bronze, which is a great highlight for these colours, as um, on its own it doesn't cover a lot, but it does make a very nice highlight for gold and coppers. So, uh, and also bronze work. Uh, once I'd um, gone over the Psychorix bronze with uh, Vallejo's gold, and again picking out just the extreme highlight areas, and it really does make that um, that metallic work shine. And you get this real bright, clean shine come out, coming away from the uh, metallics. And the final highlight was uh, Vallejo's Chrome, um, which is a, a very, very vibrant colour, so you have to build your way up to it. And also be careful not to use too much because it's such a vibrant, vibrant silver. Uh, but if you get it, if you uh, use it in the right spots, it does make a very nice shine on the um, metalwork, making it look really, really um, bright. The purity seals were based in Kallax Stone, um, which is obviously a GW uh, paint. And I did a couple of layers of that because obviously I wanted to keep uh, the paint really, really thin. Uh, once uh, the Kallax Stone had uh, had a couple of layers and got a nice coverage, I went over the um, purity seals the leather work, the, oh, my mistake, the uh, leather work was all based in Rhinox Hide and the purity seals themselves uh, based in heavy black green by Vallejo um, which is equivalent to Dark Angel's green. And it's a real nice rich colour, it stands out well against the green, uh, reds and the uh, greys for the uh, robes. So now I'm um, throwing a Agrax Earthshade wash across all the um, gold work, all the brown and the um, purity seals as well, the uh, Carrick Stone. Uh, now I do apologise slightly out of focus, at this point I was starting to get a little bit tired. Um, it was getting towards the end of a, uh, end of the day, so I was losing a little bit of concentration. Uh, once the Agrax has uh, dried obviously, I'm um, using of Shabti Bone, uh, going for, sticking with the traditional GW um, uh, colours for this. The Shabti Bone is obviously the natural highlight for um, Carrick Stone and really does work very well for this sort of thing. Uh, next is Screaming Skull, uh, throwing around the upper areas. Now, again, just be, I'm going to keep reminding you, you've got to keep your paint thin, because otherwise it can look quite um, chunky and uh, look, make the model look a bit odd. And the last uh, highlight was using ivory, uh, which is again a great colour to go over the, the uh, Screaming Skull as it's on the same spectrum. Uh, I also tend to use it in a lot of my other uh, colours for a mix uh, as it's got a bit of yellow to it. So it tends to uh, work very well as a highlight colour for other things when mixed in. So this is it so far. The uh, flesh has been based with Cadian rather than uh, Tusk or Fur or 
uh, Bugman's Glow, as I wanted her to be a little bit paler than normal because obviously it's a lady, and their skins are classically a little bit brighter than uh, a man's flesh. So a couple of layers of Cadian Flesh Tone uh, gets a real nice colour for that. Uh, next is a mix of Cadian Flesh and Harvester Flesh, which is scale 75, and it gives you a very sort of um, unhealthy uh, pallor to the um, flesh, making it quite, quite light. Uh, I wasn't totally happy with the colour at this point, um, it just didn't quite work for me, so I threw a little bit of re uh, Regal and Flesh, um, flesh Tone onto the uh, face, uh, just to bring out some of the detail work. Um, including the scar and um, uh, it actually does really um, pull the um, face back together and now the next highlights were using scale 75's um, harvest flesh again and um, focusing more on the upper details as such the Reekland flesh is uh, getting liberally applied uh, to the inside of um, the detail work and Brain Eater Brown, which is the next, I think that's what it's called, Brain Eater Brown, where scale 75 is the next layer um, on the highlighted flesh and it's just a real bright, unhealthy colour. I, want, I didn't um, intend for it to go this way, but it, I found it really worked. The um, very pale, sort of uh, cloistered look works very well for this particular model. So she uh, has definitely spent a lot of time praying rather than out in the sun where she needs to be. So I threw uh, a little bit of a, a dull purple into her um, eye, uh, eye socket uh, just to add a, a little bit of colour there um, before I uh, started to mark out her eyes. Uh, I, and she's got a bionic eye, it made it a lot easier to, for me to do one eye um, as I have a tendency of making them look cross-eyed or like the old startled rabbit in the headlights thing. So, dry out bark on the um, first highlight for uh, the flesh, uh, sorry, the leather work. Now, I'm using the same colour for the um, books as well, um, just to get them uh, all tied in together. So, this dry, uh, dry out bark it then goes up to uh, go for brown on the same areas just to um, pick out them colours uh, as a final uh, layer. The next layer is uh, moot green on the uh, tops of the purity seals. Now I'm being quite liberal here, I wanted the uh, purity seals to look quite bright and, I, and uh, they are quite unnaturally highlighted at this point but I uh, were working towards a longer game so obviously I was uh, planning ahead on that. So the flames uh, is a filthy brown, which is an old uh, favourite of mine for when working with yellow. I just went straight over the top, um, which kind of handily gave me a bit of a groovy OSL onto the backpack, etc. A couple of layers of that. I did this through the airbrush because um, working um, natural uh, shades by hand is a lot, uh, a lot, lot harder than doing it through the airbrush. So it's just time saving and getting the effect on what I wanted. The next was Corn Red. Um, going straight over the top uh, um, towards the upper areas and then added black to the Corn Red which gave me a right, a real dirty brown look and it really worked for a natural um, transition from the yellow to the red to the uh, black right at the top uh, where the smoke would be and I just ever so gently being really careful not to get it too far across the rest of the model as I didn't want to spoil the other paintwork but I wanted to uh, add the uh, flame looking really really cool, cool and uh, dark. And next was pretty much pure black at this point just uh, mixed into the old paintwork uh, into the old paint um, and I'm just a aiming the uh, airbrush right at the top of the flame just where the smoke would be and you get a really cool effect doing it this way um, and you only need three colours to do it. So as you can see I've um, gone for the classic hazard tape um, pattern on the uh, uh, chain blade and I'm using uh, masking tape just to um, make the uh, lines straight 
Again, this is filthy brown. What I had done is I'd done a, a screamy, sorry, a storm vermin for a highlight all along the um, black of the um, blade. So this will trans uh, translate through to the um, yellow on the um, model itself as well, as it'll give you a sort of a, a pre-installed uh, pre highlight onto the yellow, making um, that entire area done just in one layer. So once I'd got onto the uh, cloak again, I'm using Sky Grey, which is the natural highlight for uh, Colt uh, Wolf Grey, um, over the uh, top of the uh, Wolf Grey. And then I'm starting to add um, ivory, sorry, off-white into the uh, mix. I'm keeping the paint really, paint really thin. I'm, uh, what I'm getting, getting is a very, very gentle highlight onto the robe. And it really, really does work well for this um, particular color. And it gets a really um, nice uh, mix if you do it right. So I'm throwing a bit of dirt because I will always my stuff dirty. Um, Terra Earth around the bottom of the uh, robes and the cloak. And what this does is it really just ties everything in together with the uh, rest of the model and makes it look a little bit more battle worn uh, where she's been fighting and such. Um, but I am focusing on the robes rather than the armour. Uh, it's just sort of a, a cursory effect on, on, on it on, onto the armour. So a bit of burnt umber. Uh, I, get a uh, I add a little bit of a blockage on uh, the uh, airbrush so we're firing at weird angles uh, and I didn't notice until too late. So it was a little bit stronger than I initially intended. Uh, but I uh, just um, muted that down with uh, Terra Earth and um, Dead, Fle um, Dead Flesh, uh, which are both uh, Vallejo colours. And I just toned it, uh, toned it all together with that. Threw an oil, um, a gloss and a oil wash on it, then matted it all back together, and this is what we've got. So there is obviously a few things I'd do differently this time. Uh, mostly being the robes, I would have painted a completely different way because I just weren't happy with how that went. Um, I could have probably done with putting a little bit more life into the face as well, but overall, I'm fairly happy with this fig. So thank you for watching, um, congratulations if you managed to make it this far, uh, if this is the sort of thing you want to see, if you like uh, and you want to see more of the same, please hit like, please subscribe, please share with your friends, um, there's a bell in the po uh, top corner, please hit that and you get all the notifications so you never miss a vid, and we shall catch you on the next one guys, I will see you soon, bye bye.